Hey, how's it going? It's Neil Parfit here. This is video number five of getting started with the ER301 sound computer. Uh, the first four videos we focused on overall navigation, how to insert and remove different units, process external and internal signals in different ways, um, assign CV sources, and use the various sample recorders, loopers, and audio recorders within the module. Um, today I thought we'd try something different, um, just sort of diving in a little bit more. Um, I was reading on a forum, forum somewhere about freeze delays, and I was like, oh, I'd love it if this could do a freeze delay, but if we go into insert units, there currently isn't a freeze delay. But I think there's enough building blocks with all these different units to actually sort of fake it and make one ourselves. So that's sort of my idea for today. So what do we need to be able to freeze an outside signal? if we want to call it freeze in quotes. Uh, we need some sort of recorder or buffer to grab that sound. So we have this already. So if I insert a sample looper or sample recorder in brackets looper, this can act as our buffer. So just bear with me. I'm going to set this up for a second. So as with these loopers, um, you have to assign it a sample or a file buffer that it can record to. So I'm going to go to Actions, Assign Buffer. I'm going to create a new file in the pool. I'll just give it some arbitrary length, like 15 seconds. Enter, Enter. So now we have a buffer assigned. And let's go to Transport. We'll engage it. And we'll just kick it into Record so it's rolling. And let's go to All Controls. I'm going to set the wet dry balance to an external CV source, such as this LS1 light strip on, I believe it's plugged into D1. So like before, if a fader can be, or if a parameter or a fader or whatever can be assigned externally, you'll see an input assigned down here. So I'm going to hit the wet. I'm going to hit empty. I'm going to go D1. I can verify my signals there. And Last thing we have to do is assign gain until it adjusts that parameter. And you can see as I increase the gain, the right little fader thingy moves up to its maximum position. So I want it to be like 100% wet or 100% dry. So there we go. So that's my first setting. Um, if we're gonna treat this looper as an external recorder, always exter recording the external input, I want my dub set to zero because I don't want it to regenerate any recorded signal that was pre-existing. Um, this will make more sense as we hear it. And what else do we need to do? We, oh, um, well, we want to use this as sort of a delay, like a freezer. So we need to be able to ping this reset button externally from a clock. In my case, I have a clock going into B1 from a Pamela's workout, and I'm just going to assign the reset to that. So I'm going to hit reset. Here's my input assign. I'm going to set it to B1. There you go. You can see the gate signal. Signal. Um, it's a pretty wide uh, square gate, so we will have to modify that, but we'll get to that in a second. So, so far, we now have a looper continuously recording our external input and it's resetting every quarter note. So you can see it here. So now, if I ex if I assign this an audio input, um, I have a microphone going into a ZDSP with some reverb. So let's hear what that sounds like. So that's constantly recording. And the idea here is it's not actually freezing, freezing the audio until I actually disengage the record. So check this out. I'm just going to set this to 100% wet. As soon as I disengage the punch, there we go. <laughs> so if I record this again, So there we go. Now we're freezing the external audio in a synchronized quarter note pulse. It's kind of neat. 
And if I just leave it in punch, it'll just record the external source again. Kind of cool. But that's not fast enough. So what we need to do is I want to be able to variably control how fast this reset's being pinged. And I still want it to be in time. So let's have some fun with this. Uh, I'm going to go into this reset assign. And currently we have that B1. Uh, the first problem we have is I think this uh, gate signal is actually, it's too wide. And I discovered that if you insert a tap tempo, I'm going to assign the tap of this tap tempo to the same CV source, which was B1. If you, I'm going to turn off the division so it's a straight through one to one on the output. Oops. Check this out. So that's that's what our gate signal looks like, but there's this width control. So you can actually adjust the width of that ping. And check this out. I can go to fine adjust here and I can adjust this even more narrow. Great. So now we have a really narrow ping and this, this is where it gets interesting. So that's a CV signal, right? But currently we don't have a clock divider module unit in the ER301 yet. So what can we use to divide that CV signal even further? Why not add a clocked tempo delay after the CV signal? So let's do that. I'm going to go, where is it here? Clock delay. And I'm going to assign the clock of this delay to that same B1 source. Let's do that. Now remember, that's just the clock for this delay. Its actual processing is that CV audio signal coming right before it, this little tiny pulse. So now our delay is perfectly synchronized because they're all synchronized from B1. If I up this division to, let's say, 4, and if I crank the feedback, and give me one second, I'm just going to up the wet signal and go back to course adjust here. Let's see what happens now. See how we have some in-time pings? I think our feedback might be a bit too high. But let's look. Look how fast our, our reset's being triggered now. So let's let's just see what happens here. <laughs> so look how fast our looper is acting as a buffer now. And you can see the signal is constantly being refreshed. But the moment I kick out a record, There we go, that's uh, faster, but still synchronized freezing of the external audio. Let's, let's make this even more drastic. Um, let's assign this division of like the delay, the tempo delay division to this second LS1 light strip. So again, I want that parameter. And I know that my LS1 one light strip, the second one is going into D2. So let's just set that to D2. You can see it there. And just like before, if I want my resting position there, I now have to add gain to this external control to adjust how high it can go. Okay, let's try that. Now look how fast it's going. It's like going bananas. But let's hear what that sounds like. It's really fast. There we go. So these stutters are in perfect time with an external tempo source. So, I mean, it's not perfect, but 
it just gives you an idea of what you can do if you just sort of wrap your head around a problem and just experiment. Like, don't be afraid to run CV signals through audio effects just to see what will happen. I mean, look at this. Like, these clock pulses are basically through an audio effect to achieve them. So, I don't know how to really end this video, but uh, just give it a try. Okay, cheers. Bye.